Hi boys and girls. Today I am going to read you The Sneetches by Dr. Seuss. And this is one of my favorite stories because I really like the message behind it. And I wonder if you guys can pick out what this story might be trying to teach us. So let's go ahead and get started. The Sneetches. Now the star belly sneeches had bellies with stars. The plain belly sneeches had none upon theirs. Those stars weren't so big, they were really so small. You might think such a thing wouldn't matter at all. But because they had stars, all the star belly sneeches would brag. We're the best kind of sneech on the beaches. With their snoots in the air, they would sniff and they'd snort. We'll have nothing to do with plain belly sort. And wherever, whenever they met some, they were out walking. They'd hike right on past them without even talking. When the star belly children went out to play ball, could a plain belly get in the same game? Not at all. You only could play if your bellies had stars and the plain belly children had none upon theirs. When the star belly sneeches had frankfurter roasts or picnics or parties or marshmallow toasts, they never invited the plain belly sneeches. They left them out cold in the dark of the beaches. They kept them away, never let them come near, and that's how they treated them year after year. Then one day, it seems, while the plain belly sneeches were moping and doping along on the beaches, just sitting there wishing their bellies had stars, a stranger zipped up in the strangest of cars. My friends, he announced in a voice clear and keen, my name is Sylvester McMonkey McBean, and I've heard of your troubles. I've heard you're unhappy, but I can fix that. I'm the fix-it-up chappy. I've come here to help you. I have what you need. And my prices are low, and I work at great speed, and my work is 100% guaranteed. Then quickly, Sylvester McMonkey McBean put together a very peculiar machine. And he said, you want stars like a star belly sneech. My friends, you could have them for $3 each. Just pay me your money and hop right aboard. So they clambered inside, then the big machine roared, and it clonked, and it bonked, and it jerked, and it barked, and it bopped them about, but the thing really worked. When the plain belly sneeches popped out, they had stars. They actually did. They had stars upon theirs. Then they yelled at the ones who had stars at the start. We're exactly like you. You can't tell us apart. We're all just the same now, you snooty old smarties. And now we can go to your Frankfurter parties. Good grief, groaned the ones who had stars at first. We're still the best sneeches, and they are the worst. But now, how in the world will we know? They all frowned. If which kind is what, or the other way around. Then up came McBean with a very sly wink. He said, things are not quite as bad as you think. So you don't know who's who. That's perfectly true. But come with me, friends. Do you know what I'll do? I'll make you, again, the best sneeches on beaches. And it will cost you is $10 eaches. Belly stars are no longer in style, said McBean. What you need is a trip through my star off machine. This wondrous contraption will take off your stars so you won't look like the sneeches who have them on theirs. And that handy machine, working very precisely, removed all the stars from their tummies quite nicely. Then with the snoots in the air, they paraded about and they opened their beaks and they let out a shout. 
We know who is who now. There isn't a doubt. The best kind of sneeches are sneeches without. Then, of course, those with stars all got frightfully mad. To be wearing a star now was frightfully bad. Then, of course, old Sylvester McMonkey McBean invited them into his star off machine. Then, of course, from then on, as you probably guess, things got really got into a horrible mess. All the rest of that day, on those wild, screaming beaches, the fix-it-up Chaffee kept fixing up sneeches. Off again, on again, in again, out again, through the machines, they raced round and about again, changing their stars every minute or two. They kept paying money. They kept running through, until neither the plane nor the star bellies knew whether this one was that one, or that one was this one, or which one was what one, or what one was who. Then, when every last cent of their money was spent, the fix-it-up chappy packed up and he went, and he laughed as he drove in his car up the beach. They never will learn. No, you cannot teach a sneech. But McBean was quite wrong. I'm quite happy to say that the sneeches got really quite smart on that day. The day they decided that sneeches are sneeches and that no kind of sneech is the best on the beach. That day, all the sneeches forgot about stars and whether they had one or not upon Lars. The end. Isn't that such a great story? This is one of my top favorites of all time, especially Dr. Seuss. He's such a great writer and author. Can't wait to hear from you guys again today. I'll talk to you guys soon.